I'm dead. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It's sorry, it says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Fire merch. And a child Sorry. shall lead them to buying our merch. Uh, Shout out to Anarchy99, one of our alliances that we spoke about earlier in the Anarchy intro. Anarchy90 freaking nine. Mm -hmm. They always have unique... Uh, thingamajiggies. Yep. I think Pixies, gorge away. Gouge, gouge I mean. Gouge, gouge away. Gouge. This is the Pixies gouge away. No, she, just Pixies, right? Not the Pixies. It's just Pixies. What's the difference? Is there a difference? There's a difference? Well, sometimes bands have like, it's not the Pantera. It's Pantera. Okay. All right. So it's Pixies. <laughs> The name of the song is... Gouge Away. Uh, Gouge Away. This should be a very, very interesting uh, scenario to listen yep. to, for sure. So apparently this is a spin-off the uh, Samson and Delilah story. Why would you say that? Don't ruin they wanted it, it for announced. the audience. Who, who wanted it? Oh, they wanted it announced? That's what they said. The Anarchy 99 people? Did they? <sighs> That's what they isn't, said. Isn't one of the uh, Anarchy 99 people here? Is it Silver? We're doing a fire stream, guys. That means that so we're, we we're doing the whole thing on my jiggy. All right, so we got the lyrics right there. Bada bing, bada boom. Gouge away is the name of the song. And uh, let's go. Where's my headphones? I need my headphones on. I need my headphones. Gouge away, ladies and gents. Pixies, gouge away. The time has arrived. Baseline is hard, bro.
<laughs> it's and it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it says? No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, I what, actually what an odd song. This might be an. I I, I want to see what people say about this. This might be a new feature of the channel. Uh, okay, so here is what um, one of the homies said. One of the homies who actually wrote the song. This is what he actually said about the song. So I'm just going to try this out, see it, see how it works. We might not do it. What What are you thinking? Do you not uh, want to do it? No, I don't know what you're doing. So I mean, oh, okay. how can I have an opinion? So here is one of the guys in the band. This is what he says about the song. It's a story about Samson and Delilah. You're the first person that's actually realized, probably because the song doesn't actually mention Samson or Delilah. It's a sort of a sex story. Delilah shows up as a secret spy of the Philistines and has an affair with Samson. I don't know what he was getting out of it, but enough sex and drugs and relaxation to give up his secrets. Maybe he loved her. I don't know. But they gouged out his eyes in the end. He's a pro. <laughs> you know what? It's weird. I never thought that there could possibly be drugs involved in that story. Really? Well, because Samson couldn't even drink wine, right? Wasn't well, that the Nazarite no, vow? he wasn't supposed to. But he did. He did. That's well, why That's why the hair, people think that, oh, it was his hair was his strength. No, the, the strength was in the vow. Yeah, but he had already broken the vow. Drinking he already wine. broken the vow and he already touched the dead body, which made him unclean. So the last thing he had that kept him as a Nazarite was his hair. Because they, they would vow not to oh, cut so their hair. Oh, so he did them all. He broke all of them. Right. So he, he, he already touched a dead body, which violated the vow. He already uh, drank wine, which violated the second part of his vow. And the third part of the vow was that he would have long hair. So his long hair was the last thing that he had that maintained the special covenant he had with God. Done. So... That's that's why he had all that strength from his hair. It wasn't some magical thing. It was, okay, you're in covenant with God. You're keeping covenant. So God is going to give you the power to overcome the enemies of your people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the end of the story, I mean, yeah, she, she, she did. They gouged his eyes out. That's a fact. I don't know how you can live with yourself. After gouging somebody's eyes out? Well... Or being the... Being the person that betrays that... Like, like I would have a real hard time... Okay, it depends. If it's a bad person, you know what I mean? But, like, not bad in the sense of they're just not on the same side as you. But, like, let's say it was, like, a like a rapist. Like, you know what I mean? Like, a serial rapist or something. Like, something like that. Then I wouldn't feel bad betraying the person. But if it was just, like, well, they're the enemy because they're just they're just protecting their, their lands and we're protecting ours... I would not feel good about betraying somebody like that, like getting them to love you and using your using your mind to be like, tell me if you really love me, blah, blah, blah. And then he finally tell like, how could he have been so stupid? You know what I mean? I mean like women, women have been doing that for millennia, though. I'm not talking about all women. I'm talking about myself. I don't know how you can do that. Like betray somebody, get someone to love you just so you can betray them. Well, everything is so simple. Either or with you. I, I don't think that that was her Everything primary... Everything is so complex with you. I don't think that that was her primary motivation. I don't think you can make the case that that was so her So she primary fell in love motivation. with him and then... And they saw they saw a a uh, an opportunity to exploit his weakness. She went along with it, though. What was she going to do? She was a Philistine. What was she going to do? Say no. Okay. Then what happens? Then know. they kill her? They're okay. at war. Well, then she could have told him. They're at war with this dude. Oh, she was a prostitute, though. She wasn't really his girl, right? Well, she was kind of his girl. But she, look, Samson did not demonstrate a lot of loyalty to women. I mean, he was constantly frequenting these these mm -hmm. these brothels. Yeah. So what's she supposed to do is put her life in Samson's hands and, and trust in his, you know, faithfulness to her? Like, the guy had already demonstrated yeah, that he wasn't. Is, Samson, like, it happened like three times. Whatever it was that he said was the problem, then she went and did it. And then yeah, that, he was like, oh, the Philistines are upon you. And then he got, gets up and breaks the stuff and blah, blah, blah. Like, couldn't he have seen where this was going? Or maybe he never saw the Philistines and he just was... Like, maybe he never saw them. Maybe he just thought she was testing him, but that there was actually no Philistines there. I just think when you're a guy that's got... Um, um, that kind of power. I mean, he took on mm -hmm. whole detachments of yeah. armies by himself. You just don't really think anything's going to happen to you. 
You don't think that you're gonna. Yeah, it's the same thing in the military. Right? Like you don't think you don't think anything's gonna. You're 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 young. You're 18, 19 years old. Oh my gosh. You don't think anything's gonna happen. They to you. both went out, and now this is out completely. <clears throat> yeah, I see. We're still online though. But my point is, you don't think anything's gonna happen to you when you're when you're in that situation. You don't think you're gonna lose. So I understand why Samson, you know, did what he did, um, because. You don't think you're gonna lose, but I, I don't. I've always like I never understood why everybody went after Delilah. I'm like, what the hell was she supposed to do? She's supposed to say, "Fuck you, uh, military general of my people who knows exactly where I live." I'm gonna put all. I'm gonna put my entire life in the hands of a guy who cavorts with a bunch of women, and I'm gonna trust that he really loves me, huh? What was she supposed to do? Like, I've always thought that Delilah's gotten a bad rap in the Bible. But then again, you always you always say that I, uh, I always make excuses for you bad do. people. You nobody's, do. Nobody's bad. Who's bad? Well, the devil's bad. That's it? Just the devil? I like, thought... everybody else is just... <laughs> Ed Gain, too? I mean, there's excuses and reasons for everybody and it's everybody's not, okay? It's, it's not an excuse to say you know what this extenuating factor might have contributed to so and so's behavior i don't think that that's making an excuse for people i just think it's understanding why people do things i i think that's a difference like i'm just trying to understand why a person does what they do i'm not trying to necessarily condemn them per se because i think if a person does something condemnable it's obvious to the world that what they're doing is condemnable it's not obvious to you. What do you mean? What do you mean? She it's just not betrayed him, and then you had like this. What I'm saying is, what was she supposed to do? Her life is in danger. These are people. These are killers. These are stone cold killers. So, what is a woman in the ancient world supposed to do? She's supposed to say, "Man, fuck you guys." Like, just tell me rationally. Tell me what you'd instruct your daughter to do. You'd say, "Sayla." Let those Philistines kill you for a guy who's probably not no, even really committed I, no, to you. No, I wouldn't. My, I'm thinking through all the things. I'm like, well, she could have told them, take me and my family to your lands. Then I'm like, no, they're not safe over there because they were Philistines. And they'd be surrounded by his people. And then it could go south. That's not a good plan. You can't tell them to say, the whole thing is not, not a good plan. Yeah, it wasn't good for women in the ancient world. So I, I've... I've yeah. The, the, the way people come down on this girl is, is bananas to me. Like, I'm like, okay, what was she supposed to do? But this just shows you, like, the patriarchal understanding of religion. Because I think if the people who are interpreting the Bible were mostly female, then we'd have a completely different understanding of Jezebel. We'd have a completely different understanding of, of uh, particularly Delilah. You could be right. You know, and it, you know, it's it's very similar with the David and Bathsheba situation. I I uh, I had never considered this, but the guy said, you know, David raped Bathsheba. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And he said, look, there was no way in the ancient world she could have said no. Right, so he's a king. So he, I mean, he's a king. He's got the power of life and he's unquestioned. He's got the power of life and death. So. What was she supposed to do? That's why That's why Bathsheba, it's very interesting in the text, she never gets condemned. Not once. And she never gets called an adulteress. She, she, God never says anything even relatively close to anything judgmental or he negative about her. kills her baby, her. though. He kills David's baby. It's her baby. Yeah, but, but, but the text says explicitly that the motivation of God wasn't to punish her, it was to punish David. Well, my she my, got... my point is my point is God says nothing negative about Bathsheba. Yeah, I see what you're saying. He said nothing negative about her. So I think a lot of our perceptions of women in the Bible and a lot of these stories is is based on a a male's um biased view of things so now we look at these women as these horrible women when in reality the vast majority of them were simply trying to survive in an extremely hostile environment you know you could be right so well i mean to this moment you still haven't answered what what Je what she was supposed to do mm -hmm. what was what what was delilah supposed to do well i wasn't thinking about her own people killing her if she didn't go along with it 
I don't think that there's anything she could have done. That's what I'm saying. It's the ancient world, you know? Yeah. So, so Delilah looks to me, I, I think the message of the Bible around the, the, the Delilah situation is, and especially if you look at it in the context of Please the point. stop touching everything. If you babe, look at it, it in the context on. of the point of the book of Judges, that Delilah, I think probably what's happening is this is sucking up too much juice. Um, I, I think the message of Delilah is this is what happens when men have unfettered uh, rule without having to report to God. Women are always going to get put in these horrible situations. Now, it'd be one thing if the text says that Delilah stalked him out and she found him and blah, 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 then okay, fine, right? Like, and I, I, I'm not naive. I know that there are evil women on the planet for sure. <laughs> I, I believe that. I did a whole thing on Margaret Sanger and how horrible of a person I think she was. So I'm not saying that there aren't evil women. I'm just saying that a lot of the, the, the female villains of the Bible, most of the time, they're not even portrayed as villains. Delilah is not portrayed as a villain. There's no commentary in the text that says well, Delilah is an evil woman. She's horrible. She's this. She's... It doesn't say that. And there are times when the Bible goes after yeah, women. That's, that's just how they told it to us in Sunday school. Well, exactly by the patriarchal male influence that that oh I, I mean, if you think about it, it's 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 a perfect story, right? Female sexuality. You got a guy who can't control his sexual urges. So Delilah is the ultimate bad guy in the situation. Not the guy, not the alcoholic. Oh uh, guy who cavorts with prostitutes and kills people. Right. He's not the bad guy. It's not the Philistines who are an oppressive group of horrible, nasty, disgusting. No, no, they're not the bad guys. The bad guy is the woman <laughs> who who betrayed to. She's the real problem. <laughs> and that's all we get. Now, all that gets whittled in the story is. Oh, be careful! A woman will destroy you. I mean, I, I, you hear it so many times, and you know, in churches, and all the woman will destroy you. The woman will destroy you. It's never like, you know, you need to have some self control. Mm. And the way that we teach, and I, I'm a little bit, you know, uh, passionate about this because the way that we teach this story promotes rape culture. Because what it does is it holds the woman responsible. Mm -hmm. For the man's inability to control himself. So now she's eternally known as the bad guy in the story. She's the she's the dangerous one to be avoided. Not the powerful not the powerful men who she was stuck between. No, 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 no. The real message of Samson and Delilah is that Delilah is an evil woman. And women like that should be avoided by godly men. That's the story. It's not. Hey, uh, how about you uh, not uh, break your vows to God? If you take a special vow, don't drink any alcohol. If you take a special vow, don't cavort with, 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 with women, with nine different women in a night. Don't do that. That should be the story of Samson. And, and yes, there are women you can foolishly... Um, Spend your strength on evil women. The Bible's explicit when it talks to us about the evil woman. Mm -hmm. Go look at Proverbs. I have no problem with saying there are evil women in the world. The problem is Delilah is not called an evil woman by the narrator. This is crazy. Look at this. So it's this book. Well, there's a book. The top 10 bad women of the Bible. Delilah, who tempted Samson. Salome, who danced for Herod. Queen Jezebel eaten by dogs. Eve, the source okay. of all our troubles. Eve, yeah. The source of all our troubles, it says. Yeah. Herodias Eve. plotted John's but, death. But this is what I'm talking about. This is this is a patriarchal bullshit. Eve is not, in the Bible, called the source of our problems. Right, Adam. The person that's called the source of our problems in the Bible is Adam. It is Adam who is said to plunge the world into the sin. It is Adam who is said to plunge the world into death. Eve is never held responsible for all of our troubles. This is what I'm talking about. The God is constantly trying to get men to take accountability and responsibility for their bullshit. And then we get hold of the Bible and completely flip it on its head. So now Delilah is some, um, she's just a really horrible, terrible person. <laughs> and Eve is the source of all of our troubles. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> she was a beautiful Philistine woman and a successful, what is this, courtesan? 
Yeah, that means she was in the courts. You remember like oh. in the King Henry? Oh. If you were in the courts and all that stuff? The strong man Samson loved her, though what he meant by love is uncertain. He once described making love with his wife as plowing with my heifer. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. Well, like in the Quran says, uh, your wives are your tilth. You know, so just... Despite an appalling record of violence, Samson was a hero to the Hebrew settler settlers who were trying to find a place for themselves in a land already occupied by Canaanites and Philistines. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's crazy. I always liked how pretty she was in the depictions and the cartoons. Yeah, and she wasn't. She actually wasn't a prostitute. They always made her look like a prostitute, and she yeah. was dressed she, you know, she, in red. She wasn't. And, Samson went to Gaza and there was a prostitute. He went into her. That's verse one. But verse four says, after this, he loved a woman in the Valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. So Delilah wasn't even a prostitute. But this is this is how this is how they uh, mm -hmm. this is how they do. It. And look, they already had a relationship prior to them them mm -hmm. creating this plot. So she she came into the relationship with great intentions. Or with with basic intentions, they found each other. They fell in love with each other, mm -hmm. and then the god, the lords of the Philistines, came up to her and said, "Seduce him with lies and blah blah blah, and we're going to kill him and blah blah blah." But if they were willing to kill Samson, what do you think they would have done with her? If she would have said, "Man, fuck you guys, I love this guy." What do you think would have happened to her? They were willing to kill Samson. They're going to kill her. She wasn't. So that's my thing. It's like. She gets it. I remember one time I... I, I, <laughs> I what was, happened to Samson and Delilah? Wait, hold on, babe. Delilah may have expected a quick death for him rather than the protracted torture that followed his capture. His eyes were gouged out from their sockets and he was thrown into prison. After that, Delilah disappears from the story, but probably the Philistines honored their promise of payment and Delilah enjoyed a comfortable retirement. <laughs> Yeah. You're right, babe. I see what you're saying. But, I mean, this, that's a mess. This is a mess. Yeah, and, and the other thing was like... You know, I I, I, I I taught a I taught a thing one time. We we're talking about Jezebel, mm -hmm. and Jezebel, definitely a wicked woman, terrible, horrible, evil person. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to let that prize out of the bag. <laughs> but this is actually uh, very interesting. Um, we'll probably we've got a song that's going to end up on this playlist. We'll probably do like a bunch of songs on Bad Girls of the Bible Week. Maybe who knows. Then we could feature, uh, and that's the other thing we that's could annoying. Feature, I could feature uh, my new favorite band. It's it's women. These are women of the Bible. So not only did you call them bad, even though the Bible doesn't say they're bad, you also mm. called them girls instead of calling them women. Yeah, it's all part of the same system. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, Let me carry on. But but so Ahab was crying and he was weeping because he couldn't get this piece of property. There's this other king, and he was he said, "Hey man, let me buy your land." And uh, the guy goes, nah, man, it's been our family for 10 generations. We're good. So Ahab... This is something like cucumber fields. Ahab went to his, uh, he went to his chambers and started crying. Mm -hmm. And then it says, Jezebel saw that he was downcast. And she says, why are you crying and why aren't you eating? And I stopped right there and I said, this is good. I said, she knows her husband and she's concerned about him. Mm -hmm. You guys need to be like her. You would not believe. It was a shocking message. The patriarchalists came after me like, nah, blah, 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 blah. Women, blah, blah, blah. They're going to run over all the men, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, was it good that Jezebel saw that her husband was under some emotional duress? Her solution was horrible. But don't we want the girls to know their husbands well enough to be able to know what the hell's going on with them without the husbands have to say it? Like, isn't that a good thing? Isn't that something we want? Well, no, women... she didn't know what was going on. That's why she asked him, and then that's he what told I'm saying. the field. Yeah. That's, what I, that's what I'm saying. Like, she knew he was under. She knew something was wrong with he him. Didn't she didn't say he was fine. He, he didn't. He didn't her. come out. He didn't come out and say, "Yo, like, you want women to do that, right?" He goes, "Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be great." I'm like, "Okay, well, Jezebel did that. That's something they need to replicate." Nah, 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 nah. he couldn't see it and I'm like look King David don't we encourage men to be like King David yes he was a great guy I'm like excellent he also committed adultery mm -hmm. so we can show guys don't do this do this but when a woman makes a mistake forget it there's nothing redeemable about her she's just trash <laughs> ah it makes me so makes me so angry um but yeah, it was a good song. I'm just I'm blown away that they made this. But this is a song where 
I'm gonna listen to this song a lot because this is one of those songs really? where you can you you can listen to it like five or six times and you're gonna hear something different. Like this band is it's very the sound is extremely dense. Some of the stuff that they were doing with the drums was crazy. Um, I this band influenced Smashing Pumpkins, Nirvana. Oh wow! Like oh my gosh. pretty much everybody. I think it's probably. It. But one of the comments I because we did a song from this band before. One of the comments I heard from them was that they are almost single handedly responsible for the whole entire grunge sound. These guys. Oh wow. Yeah. So they're like they're they're no joke. Like they're they're big time. But and and some of the things that they did. If you just listen to it at a surface level listening, it's like, oh yeah, it's a it's a decent song. But if you really like keep playing it over and over and over again, like it's one of those songs where the last song that happened to me with was with uh, FBG Duck, the slide song, because that song is actually extremely complex when you really sit and listen to the to the nuances of it. So mm. I really like what they did sonically here. Um, and I wondered to myself, like, would I have been able to figure it out if uh, I didn't know the backdrop? The gouge away would have helped. Sleeping on my belly. Pro- I-, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> the lyrics were not- chained to a pillar. Yeah, we would have figured it out. Yeah, chained to a pillar with gouge. I probably would have yeah. figured it out. But this is the, this is one of the reasons why I party. I break the walls. Yeah, and I kill us all with holy fingers. Yeah, I, we would have got that. But I think that. It was just the lyrics were not. <laughs> you stroke my locks. Some marijuana if you got. I don't know where they got the marijuana from. Was he drinking? Because that's still a drug, right? I, I don't know. Maybe they assume that that's kind of what was happening because mm-hmm. he was like, okay, I'll tell you. I don't know. I just, I think that the lyrics were a little too basic. I wasn't really a fan of that, and the sound was okay. So for me, it's not a. It's a seven point nine. Yeah, it says nothing about um, any of the weed. <laughs> mm. I wish you would have had someone. It fell on the set. It'd have been better. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, babe. All right, what are you giving it? Uh solid eight point nine for me. There you have it. Uh, what did you give it? Seven something look at this look at this i didn't know vin was an sjw (laughs) i didn't know i was an sjw either (laughs) i did not know i was an sjw what does that mean who knows there you are dear listener uh thank you guys for hanging out it's been two hours they recently have found uh... mj who's mj ancient digs in palestine who Vin is going to go out and play Manhunt, supposedly. Are you? I might. If you don't, I will. I might. I might. I wish we could both go out and play. It's fun. Yeah, it's happens. It's happened. All right, you beautiful people. Oh, I can. Because someone got grounded. Oh, that's right. I, I told him. I said, God help you if I go out to play Manhunt. I forgot so, about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so does. we will be playing Manhunt, and uh, my oldest will be uh, watching his uh, his brothers sleep. <laughs> watching them sleep. There you are, dear listener. The moral of the story is uh, don't cut your hair. And uh, dudes, have some self-control and stop blaming women for your issues, huh? Man up. Then out. Sorry out. Gown. Wait a second. What? They found some wacky, wacky weed. <laughs> they found wacky weed in wow. uh, archaeological ancient digs in Palestine. I don't feel like that. That's so crazy, though. That all that makes sense. No, people to me. were speculating that they were using it as part of their religious rituals, which Why, wh- makes a lot of sense to me. I'm sure. Uh, Rastafari. Yeah, because boop, imagine boop, if the I only way, button. if the only way that you could get weed or whatever was if you were in worship, like. People would get mad religious, you know. I believe or, I have to go or to not, that. or not. Maybe they didn't look at look at it as a party substance. Maybe they took it really seriously, like those guys take. Yeah, DMT but the way that, that you feel, you know what I mean. Like it probably was like an experience, and they were like, "Whoa, there's a lot of stress here. I'm I'm going to the temple." Well, plus the term for witchcraft in the New Testament most of the time is pharmakia. Yep. So do with that what you will. Vin out. Sorry out. Manhunt shall start. Yep. Uh, but Dorian in. <laughs> Babe. Because he's grounded. Dorian in, you're bad. 
That's because he's grounded. Good day, dear listener. Good day.